All right, I've got a few things to say about falsifiability. Um, this is the idea that um, science doesn't prove anything true. Um, all it can do um, is to have many, many attempts to disprove a theory. And as many attempts to disprove the theory, then it continues to stand until some better theory comes along. Um, so essentially, um, the position is that science does not find out the truth. All it can find out is untruth. Um, there are so many things wrong with this theory, um, and it's rampant. I mean, if anybody knows anything about the philosophy of science, um, it's, oh yes, falsifiability. If the theory isn't uh, falsifiable, then it's not science. Um, so I'm, I'm going to say a lot about falsifiability. I'm going to um, uh, elaborate on what it is, and then I'm going to go point by point, because there are a lot of... Um, seemingly obvious problems with it. Um, so here we go. Um, the main point, um, again, is that you can't prove a theory true. Um, for example, science apparently cannot uh, prove that, science, that Einstein's theory of relativity is true. All it can do is attempt to disprove it. And as long as it stands disproved, then that's as close as science can get. Well, um, obviously, um, by this standard, um, science cannot prove or cannot say for certain that Dr. Salk's polio vaccine works. Um, it cannot say that uh, the Earth is round and not flat. It can't say for sure that what goes up must come down. Um, so, um, let's see, another thing uh, people sometimes say is that um, schools of thought or, or uh, you know, theories like Marxism or Freudianism are not falsifiable, and for that reason they're not scientific. Um, they'll also say that um, conspiracy theories are often not falsifiable. Um, I argue that they are indeed falsifiable. You can disprove Freudianism. You can disprove conspiracy theories. Um, so, um, anyway, I'm going to argue that the um, falsifiable issue is not the reason why these things are unscientific. Um, and also, uh, another uh, thing according to falsifiability is that it's not necessary that um, it be practical to um, uh, falsify a theory. It's not necessary that it's, we can do it now. Um, it's just necessary that in theory at some point um, it would be possible in theory to do so. Um, so we've got a little bit of a, a theory versus practicality dichotomy here. So this is, this is some good stuff. All right, so starting off, science does not prove, it can only disprove. All right, well, disproof is a form of proof. I mean, if you disprove, for example, this is a stupid example, but if you disprove the HIV virus causes AIDS, then you have proven the HIV virus does not cause AIDS. So, uh, so you have proven something by disproving it. Um, so um, by falsifiability's own standards, um, by falsifying something, you have proven its opposite. So um, the next thing I'm about to say is not going to go over well with a lot of people, and um, that is that there is no scientific method. Um, scientific method does not exist. Um, there is Basically, science is the application of logic to um, the real world in the form of tests and observations, and that's it. I mean, it's not like science is this other realm that is totally separate and operates by different rules than any other human endeavor. I mean, it, there is nothing special about, you know, biological systems or about, you know, planets that makes the uh, the attempt to find truth any different from you know trying to find out the truth about you know about anything else in the world I mean um, the, I mean it's all the same system I mean it's the same reality and the same there's no reason why the normal laws of logic are going to apply in one way to say criminology or to you know finding out whether your kid told the truth or a lie or whatever. Um, than it would to any other system. So to say that, that somehow science is special and in science alone we cannot prove anything true um, is really, is totally arbitrary. It's a bold assertion and uh, there's, there's just no basis for it. I mean, if it's possible to prove anything true, and it is, obviously, 
um, then it's possible to prove uh, the truth about you know the natural world, about you know astronomy, about the nature of light, and any uh, any other scientific uh, endeavor you can think of. Um, they say that it's not necessary that a theory uh, necessarily uh, they 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 don't insist that it's that a theory or idea be you know practical to falsify. Um, for example, if you were to predict that it would snow in Billings, Montana on February 3rd in the year 5723, um, that is, in theory, falsifiable. I mean, people who are around at that time will be able to look outside and see if it's snowing. Um, we can't do it right now, but there's nothing in theory, you know, prohibiting that from happening. Um, but um, people who adhere to falsifiability would say something like, um, a, a proposition like there is a God is not falsifiable because they say you can you know look around the universe and never find God and, there, and the uh, the uh, believers in God will always have a ready uh, reason for why they, you couldn't find God anywhere you looked um, so they would call that unfalsifiable um, so the problem with this point is that everything is falsifiable everything. Everything is falsifiable in principle. Even axioms are falsifiable. Um, all you need is um, a little imagination and um, you know there's always a way that you can falsify something. Um, like if uh, you want to uh, find out how are you going to falsify, how is A is A falsifiable? Well if you could find a case where A is not A in some uh, in the same respect and at the same time well then there you go. I mean you uh, you found a way to in theory uh, falsify A is A. So if, if you take the idea that there is a God of course that's falsifiable too. I mean all you need uh, to do is find the definition of God and if God is defined as uh, an omnipotent being uh, who is also omniscient, well then there, there you go again. I mean that's, that's, it's falsified right there. Um, so, um, and so is uh, Bertrand Russell's uh, uh, orbiting teapot. He had this analogy where um, people would say, oh well you can't prove that there's no God. And he goes, well you can't prove that there isn't a teapot orbiting the sun between the earth and, the, and Mars or whatever. Um, and by the way, it's so small that no one can see it. Um, it's it's smaller than the smallest micro uh, than than the smallest thing you, that you could see under a microscope. Well, this is falsifiable too. I mean, for one thing, um, you know, today, you know, after Bertrand Russell had this this idea, you know, we can see atoms in electron microscopes. I mean, we have uh, telescopes that can see billions and billions of years into the past. Um, so, so this too, I mean, anything you can think of, I mean, all you really need is, um, is to define your terms and to uh, use your imagination and anything is falsifiable. So the idea that science is defined by falsifiability is at the window. I mean, it, it's, it's completely nonsensical because then science is everything, because everything is falsifiable. Um, so, um, so there we go. Um, and there's a, there's another idea, um, the reason that things like uh, Marxism, Freudianism, and conspiracy theories are not scientific is because they're unfalsifiable. Well, as we've already seen, they are falsifiable. Everything's falsifiable. Um, and the reason that these things are not scientific has nothing to do with, with, with uh, them being unfalsifiable. The problem is that they are unverifiable. You can't verify something that's false, that's not true. And so, you know, the whole uh, last century was a great big experiment in Marxism. Marxism failed. Uh, and it's, it's gone. It's wrong. Um, it has been falsified. And uh, another thing, conspiracy theories can be proven wrong with the same kind of documentation and evidence that we use in every other, you know, realm of life. You know, I mean, if, you know, if you went to court and you accused someone of having a conspiracy to kill someone else and you had physical evidence, well, there's your, your falsification right there. The, the theory is gone. So, um, to sum things up, I think the only thing that falsifiability is really good for is getting into the psychology of the person that you're talking to. Because um, if you can ask the person what would change your mind, 
um, you know, what, what would uh, show you that your idea is false? You can get some insight onto uh, um, what, uh, into whether the person is open to, um, to being rationally persuaded or whether they're just going to, you know, you know, be slippery and kind of squirm their way out of any argument you can send their way. Um, so basically, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of a, a, a debating tool. I mean, it's, it's a little bit useful. Um, so, you know, there you go. I mean, falsifiability is, um, <laughs> there you go. Falsifiability has been falsified. Um, it, is, it is not the way that science is uh, conducted. Um, so science is just a, a, a vigorous um, application of logic and uh, of logic toward um, the uh, world we see around us. And it has nothing to do with falsifiability.